Today we are obliged to start with a disaster news. No, but seriously, disaster news. Training session this early afternoon. Juve game. Juve against Juve. There is a family game. They are playing against each other. Federico Chiesa has the ball. Tackle. And he's late. Alexandro touching the ankle, the right ankle of Chiesa, that is obliged to go out of the field. Held by the medical staff. So it was not really looking good. Magical spray is coming back. And that's where I start recording the video. And I say more fear than harm. Then I was messing up with the video. I was not able to finish it. So I, I stopped. I took a break. And I informed myself. Update. Well, that more fear than harm transformed in when it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours. Because after a few minutes, it was obliged to really say it's over for me today. Now I don't know if tomorrow morning he will be back in training session. I don't know if he will be ready to continue to train maybe in two days, if he will be there against Napoli, if he will be obliged to miss Napoli. I have no idea about the condition. They will do some tests. So maybe in the afternoon, if not tomorrow, we will not more. But what a disaster. When I tell you that we start with a disaster, it's really a disaster news. Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, today we'll speak about the training session of today, we'll speak also about who will be available, who will not be available, Vlahovic, big topic, we continue of course to speak about Zinedine Zidane in today's video, we have a lot of t topics to cover, so let's start immediately after you, if you want to of course, maximum of like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, the birthdays, three birthdays, Dinozov, Fantastic goalkeeper, one of the greatest goalkeepers of Juventus. And Juventus has always been lucky to have big goalkeepers. Tacconi, Peruzzi, Gianluigi Buffon, Dino Zoff. Hey, Dino Zoff. I never really watched him because I was a kid. I, was, I didn't really understand football at that time. But I can tell you that reading, watching, educating myself about who Dino was, the biggest characteristic of Dino was really the fact that he was always able to feel the goal behind him. He didn't need to turn himself to understand where he was. Positioning was always perfect. What a goalkeeper. Happy birthday to Dino Zoff. Then, two players that are celebrating that are in our team, Arkadiusz Milik, happy birthday to him, but also to Moise Keane, happy birthday. And how is he celebrating today his birthday? Well, by training with the team, because today he joined the team again for a training session. Good Will he be there against Napoli? Maybe. And I hope he does. I really hope he does because we don't know about Chiesa. So that could be a good one. If not against Napoli, he will be there against Atalanta. So it's a good news there. Then, uh, who was missing? Danilo was missing. De Chilio was missing. McKenny, Rabio, Perin. Perin and De Chilio, we knew. McKenny and Rabio, we know. We also know that they will miss Napoli. Probably they all will also miss Atalanta game. It's annoying. It's really annoying. The, the injury of McKenny is more serious. But because it's the shoulder, he can continue to keep himself in form. The injury of Rabiot is less serious, but it's more annoying. So let's see when they will come back today. Rabiot is celebrated in the training session in the gym this morning with a beautiful gift from Juventus with the shirt with the 200, 200 appearance for uh, Rabio, that said, hopefully it will heal fast so that they can continue and go back to 201, 202. And let's see how much, because we don't know if he will renew or not. But also there, we come back on that in a second. And Danilo, so that option of Danilo immediately from the start in the midfield, hopefully that will not be the solution because he is not ready. Now, this evening, Serie A is back with two games. Napoli, that will play in the home of Sassuolo. You know it, Napoli will be our next opponent, so monitor and then in the evening Atalanta Inter you know what this morning I was thinking about it and I said if Atalanta wins can they reopen Serie A I'm the most positive guy I'm the most optimistic guy whatever you want to but phew, tough huh? tough really tough even if Atalanta wins today I don't even believe they will win but if they win today I don't believe it will reopen Serie A. It's, it's over, guys, it's over. I believe, eh? fino alla fine, you never know. But let, let's speak about it in a few weeks. E today, even if Atlanta wins, I will not be here celebrating, saying, yeah! And then maybe this evening I will do, you never know. But I don't believe that. No, Corriere del Sport is speaking about Inter, about Lautaro, that is trying to catch and break the record of Higuain, of uh, Ciro Immobile, that scored both 36 goals in Serie A, which is the record he needs 15 goals to do. I don't care. So they are also speaking about uh, Gasperini that spoke about Scamacca. You remember Scamacca? A lot of people wanted him before he went to uh, West Ham first flop, before going back in Italy at Atalanta, where he's not doing great. And Gasperini said, uh, 
Do we have a problem with Skamaka? No, there is no problem, but he's not a champion and he needs to work to become a champion. Great words for uh, from Gasperini. And it's the reality. Eh? I never really liked or believed in Skamaka. He has, of course, a lot of skills that we can appreciate, but he was never a player that I wanted at Juve. But uh, big words. Eh? He needs to work if he wants to become a champion. And that's a beautiful assist for me because now we enter the topic Dusan Vlahovic. And he's there in Beacon Gazeta dello Sport. Vlahovic, firmo qui. Vlahovic, I sign here. Well, look. Vlaovic is also that kind of player that probably we paid as a champion, but was not yet a champion. Let me say, we saw the qualities of Dusan at Fiorentina. And we overpaid him at the time because there was competition. Arsenal, do you remember? And also other teams that were really interested in the Serbian player. Juventus was obliged to anticipate to go fast. It was a January market and in January it's always expensive. So we probably overpaid him and we probably also overpaid his salary. So some people are saying a mistake from Juve. Some people are saying we were not able to use him as we should to let him perform to the max of his capabilities. Other people will speak about the pubalgia, the lombalgia, the physical problems of Dusan Vlaovic in the time at Juve. But we can't say, and we can't say now at the moment that he's just not performing as crazy because he is performing crazy 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 and he's finishing on all the papers it's totally logic so what are they saying firmo qui i sign here the idea of you has always been to try to extend dusan vlaovic on more years why because of the value of the player when you sign him for 80 million for eight years you need to divide that sum on five years and you pay a bit into your books because Fiorentina already received that money you pay you pay back that money in your books divided by five years of course if you extend well the remaining sum you can even split it over more years so the value in your book is less important less impactful and that has always been Juventus idea also with the idea to lower his salary because probably he received too much now Dusan Vlaovic nobody asked him or you sign or we shoot you. Eh? So Juventus was aware of what they were doing. Dusan was aware of what he was doing when they signed, when they agreed on the salary. I don't see Dusan saying, okay, you know what? I'm earning too much. Halve it. No. But Juventus can find a strategy maybe in giving him more if he reached the end of the contract with two more years, but still paying a bit less per year. So that and the value of the player and the salary of the player, you're able to, to go with amortization. So hopefully we can do that. On the other side, there is also that green, that, that will, that is translated on Gazeta del Sport. He's saying Dusan wants to bring back Juventus to victory. We also remember uh, in the beginning of Dusan when he came, we said, uh, question, is he in a way a like I was about to say a liker, someone that liked, in a way, Juventus. Not that he was a Juventino, but, you know, he was watching Serie A. He was falling in love with Juve, always idolized Cristiano Ronaldo. He's not a Juventino. But, you know, sometimes you have a bit of more teams that you're supporting. You know, that will of doing well with Juve could be well. And he's already doing well, because if you see the three seasons of Dusan, two and a half, let's say, the first six months that he was there, he scored seven goals in Serie A, one in Coppa Italia, one in Champions League. Second year, the first time that he was full at Juventus, 10 goals in Serie A, one in Champions League, three in uh, Europa League and two in Coppa Italia, where this year already 15 goals. 15 goals in Serie A. So breaking already his record with Juve in Serie A, which is great. And I'm sure that he can even reach more and more and more. What are the secrets of his comeback? Article on Gazzetta del Sport that made me laugh because there is the, the push of Max. And it's true that Max never gave up on Dusan. That's one. So the motivation of uh, and the management of Dusan Blavich and Max Allegri. Then the love, because we see in that picture, the love, we already made jokes about it. The love for Vanya. Thank you, Vanya. The books, because he's reading. You remember the stories of uh, Gatti that said, you know, read some books. And then uh, probably one that I discovered on Instagram yesterday 
evening when we saw a picture of Dusan Vlaovic building some Lego. He was building the Colosseum of Roma. It takes hours. I don't know if he did it all by himself or not, but maybe that's the secret of why Dusan Vlaovic is doing extremely well. Jokes. Now from Dusan Vlaovic, that is about to really continue. He needs to work, but to really become the number one campion, a phenomenon, a champion, well, there is another one that is already champion, according to some articles and some video that we saw. We're speaking about Barido. You remember last week we said he is officially a Juve player. Well, he played his first game. He entered in second half and immediately scoring a crazy goal. Eh? We won 4 1 that game. Crazy goal immediately with his left foot. Crazy, crazy. But the talent is big, it's huge. Eh? I spoke with uh, some journalists, with some people that are following South American football. They said he's huge, eh? he's a big talent. And when I saw him entering, scoring that goal, Wow, but now probably we are exaggerating. New star after Yildiz. Parido is already a la Dybala, a kind of Dybala. So calma, calma, he's only 16, born in 2008, we have time. Now, uh, living the dream, I, may, I hope, I hope he can live the dream in the future. I was living the dream yesterday, for example, when I had the opportunity to interview captain of uh, Juventus, ex-captain of Italian national team, because she said goodbye. We were speaking about Sara Gama. Yesterday was a really nice 30 minutes with Sara. I really enjoyed it. You know, it's really incredible. It's the first real captain that I have the opportunity to uh, to interview. She did a lot for women football in Italy. She played also in early career at Paris Saint-Germain, uh, also in USA. Uh, she was there since the birth of Juventus women. Now, learning, speaking, uh, discussing super interesting so thank you Sara if you didn't yet please go on the Twitch channel of Juventus if you speak Italian because it was really a really nice interview and I'm happy also to be part of a club that is equally putting first team men first team women next gen under 19 part of the staff that we are able to give them the opportunity to go live to speak to discuss with the support it's really beautiful so yeah, nice. And also the day after, when you see the articles on Tuto Sport, on Gazzetta del Sport, when they are referring to the interview that you did, well, it's really great for... Anyway, I'm not the only one to dream. Barido is not the only one to dream. There is also another part of the world that is dreaming, the Juventini. And I'm also in the Juventini. Zinedine Zidane is finishing on the first page of Tuto Sport. Zidane fa sognare il popolo Juve. Zidane is making the Juventini dream. And we know it. Uh, yesterday I made a video about it. Nostalgia. They are explaining it's nearly impossible for Zidane to come to Juve. It is nearly impossible. If really... First, Max Allegri needs to leave. One. Two. Well, it should be an act of love from Zinedine Zidane about salary, about ambition, about knowing that it's not immediately that you will have the same champions at Real Madrid as when he was at Real Madrid. So it's a big act of love for his will of coming and put his name again on the bench. Because, you know, if you fail, you fail. Eh? Then you have immediately the label of you're only good with champion. So it's, it's tough. Huh? I don't see it happening. I don't know if it's the right timing, but it's true that Zidane equals Juventus in our hearts. Zidane is Zidane. Zidane is Zidane. You know, I have a fantastic book by uh, Guido Vassiago that is explaining, uh, explaining all the big legends of Juventus players. There is Dino Zoff. There is Del Piero. There is uh, uh, Rossi. The, and then you see here, I'm not lying. Eh? Hey, guys. Zinedine Zidane with the story of him at Juve it's super important so yeah when you see Zidane when you hear him saying one day why not I would love to coach in Italy what do you want me to add anyway <coughs> there are some assists speaking about uh, because Zidane was the king of assists huh? but speaking about assists there could be another assist for Juventus for Juntoli this time why because in Lisbona in Portugal they are observing two players from Juve Two players that are on loan. Benfica is looking for Arthur. And then you have Sporting that is looking for a striker. It is Caio Jorge. Well, two players. Brazilian speaks the language. Portugal that always is doing quite well, especially in their league, in Liga Portugal. If they could invest some money, wow. No, but seriously, because Arthur will never be part of the project. Juve, Caio Jorge, I see difficult for him. 
really difficult. It's a pity, but it will be extremely difficult for him. So if you have that asset that can bring you 35 million euro, that's beautiful. Could be the half of the money or a bit more than half of the money that you want to invest for Cope Manners. That is still at the moment the number one target for the summer. On the other side, it's the money that you could possibly spend for Good Munson that is still also really observed by Juve. So two players that every day when we speak about Mercato, they are there. And there can be even more money that can come from players that are alone, like Parrenecea, that is observed by Genoa, like a Mattia Soule, that is observed and monitored by clubs also in Premier League. So, you know, with all the money that could come from there, and I know, and you are correct when you are saying, eh, but, but, but we have these players on loan and then we are selling them. Well, at, the, at a certain moment, you can't have 50 players at Juve. And when we are seeing how much of these young talents what, that we are producing, producing, letting increase and improve and, and going to the first team, at a certain moment, you have to sell some players that you believe that, or they are a big opportunity to let you go to your first target, or they can bring you money because you don't believe in them. So, you know, and Juve is true that they are also monitoring another player, not because he scored against that, but Brescianini was already monitored by Juve since a few weeks. So a player that could possibly also be in the eyes, in the target of Juve. Now, uh, the, last the last part, it's uh, the game against Napoli. We know already yeah, about Danilo that today didn't train with the team completely. We know that Locatelli and Alcaraz will play and then we'll need to change. We'll need to find. And now what I told you, that possibility of Cambiaso being there as a mezzala together with Alcaraz and Locatelli start to be more and more and more real. Cambiaso more than Miretti, more than Nicolussi, more than Nonje, for what reason? Because we know it, Max Allegri is always, always looking for physicality in the midfield and without Rabiot, without McKenny, if you play with a Nicolussi and a Miretti, you know, they are light players. So I'm not sure if we will change the way of playing right now against Napoli, or maybe there will be a surprise, but at the moment I'm not able to tell you. Let's see. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. If you have spare time and if you are here, that means that you love the channel. Well, there is already the other uh, channel that is already working. We uploaded this, we uploaded this morning a new video that spoke about uh, Erling Holland. That spoke about Erling Holland. Yesterday he scored five goals and much more. So if you didn't yet, the other channel is already there for you. Grazie, forza. Juve. <claps>